Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Black Box. Just finished watching it, getting as many hits on my, uh, my Amazon Prime before a free trial expires. So again, busting out a movie, and getting up pretty early, 6 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock, so watch a movie before the sun comes up and I'm ready to do my first video. You know how we do it. Overall impressions and great, after I read the overview as written by the producers, or at least as listed on Google. Then not after that, if you would like to watch the movie or not watch the movie based or not based on my recommendation, you're going to shut up the video because there will be plot synopsis and character development. Similar movies, major themes, not really. So, what do we got? We have release, it's not rated, it was released in 2020, horror slash sci-fi with an hour and 40 minutes runtime. It says, after losing his wife in, and memory in a car accident, a single father undergoes an agonizing experimental treatment that causes him to question who he really is. We got 5.4 out of 10 on Film Affinity, 71% of Rotten Tomatoes, 72% liked it on Google, and 6.2 out of 10 on IMBD. So overall, I thought this movie sucked cocks and dicks. It was basically like... There was no, there was no substance to to the plot development. Again, sci-fi, uh, like yesterday, I like the sci-fi one. Uh, but again, I think sci-fi, the genre in general, can you know, you're gonna have to break some science, trying to do something that's unrealistic. But then you can at least explore some motif or some idea that's different or novel or at least interesting or makes me think. This one was just broken science with with no real meaningful plot development for me whatsoever. So I did not enjoy this one. And I'm actually, I said anything above an F, again, F beats turning it off or um. Or walk or walking out of a theater. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go to the D minus as to off putting, and I don't recommend. So I'm gonna give Black Box a D minus. I do not recommend this one. So the drag for an hour and forty minutes. No meaningful uh, motifs. Broken science, and then just the no, nothing of interest that came from it. So uh, I thought it was off putting, and I did not enjoy this movie. So if you if you want to watch the movie, uh, if you want to shop the video. So we'll be discussing the plot synopsis and character development. So you open up, um, I think, uh, I don't know the exact opening scene, but you open up and you meet Nolan, he's got this daughter, Ava, and he's been in a car accident, um, and he, he's having memory losses, and he's going to this doctor, um, he's gone to a bunch of doctors, he's got a friend, Dr. Gary, and he, Dr. Gary works with Dr. Lillian Brooks, like a, kind of in the same office. So Nolan's been having memory issues, Trouble remembering things. He got post-it notes all over his house to tell him what to do. Um, and his daughter is, I don't know, eight, seven, eight years old. She's going to kindergarten or grade school, probably grade school. But basically, he's just trying to trying to regain his memory. Um, he learns about this experiment. Well, Dr. Gary introduces him to Dr. Lillian Brooks about this, um, just about this this program, and basically the. Well, he, Nolan initially misses a, so he drops his daughter off at school, then he goes to, he was a photographer, and he goes to, like, the publication, and they're not going to sign off on his work or pay him because his work wasn't up to par as, as it was before the accident, and so he's kind of out on his luck. Um, he forgets to pick up his daughter at uh, grade school, and I guess this is the third time, so if, if he forgets or messes up again, the school is going to call Child Protective Services, to have Ava removed from a negligent household. Um, regardless, so he's, he's kind of desperate to, you know, figure out what's going on and figure out if he can be, be fixed. And so, Dr. Gary introduces him to Dr. Lillian Brooks, and she has this experimental treatment called, or this technique called the black box, where you, you basically get hypnotized and then you explore your own, your, you explore your own memories. And so, that was again not nothing really novel or unique in that at all um and then just the, the hip, hypnosis major theme is hypnosis real no <laughs> and so people and people people that say hypnosis works on anything it's just they're just insecure and they're just going along with the sentiment of the room and then acting like they're changing their behavior when they just need to change their behavior and hypnosis is not a thing at all i actually gave a psychology a psychology presentation with my old work horrible teacher um, what was her name Linda Crandall. She, I told you the story of her comedy on my Facebook page. You know, I felt like some snarky, like, yeah, as my constitutional rights are violated, my property is destroyed, saying that all my teachers failed me. She's like, well, I thought I did something good for you. Guess not. So like a snarky little bitch. But I gave a psychology presentation where, and this is the one I literally wrote right before going to class, 
<laughs> but I wrote it, and it was like, you know, my introduction was hypnotizing the class. I just turned on the lights, I played some music, and I, I talked them through um, just, just some complete bullshit that I made up literally the lunch period before. And at the end, it was like a five minute thing. And it was like, I forget what I had them do, but I had them at the end raise their hand if they, they felt it or like felt something change. And I did it in a very serious tone. Because again, I was a very good student, the uh, yeah, leading researcher, but, but I just did it in a very serious tone and a bunch of people would raise their hand. I would literally say, my response was, you guys are all idiots, that makes no sense, I completely made all that stuff up, it's all fake. And so, demonstrating that psychology, people just go along with the sentiment of the group. It's a quick aside story that I, I don't think I've told before, <laughs> but I found told in the language litigation one. But regardless, hypnosis doesn't work. And so, she's going to hypnotize you, back to the movie, Dr. Lillian Brooks is going to hypnotize you, and you're going to regain, uh, hopefully regain your memories by working through this black box of, of drawing memories directly from your life experience. And so, he does it the first time. And they have a little safe room where you start, and then he t turns a watch to go to a f the first memory. The first memory he goes to is, I believe, he sees on um, what's his wedding day, and he can't see any of the faces. And so they're in this old wooden church, and he's, you know, lifts up the, the, the veil, the bride's veil, and it's just like a blurred face. And so after about you know two, three minutes of him looking around, this creepy crawly thing, like you know your typical scary movie, all distorted, crunching around, comes running up to him and attacks him, and he scares out of the out of the hypnosis and out of the thing. And that's it. This is done in a doctor's office where he's got like a little little headset on or a little Jill head cap thing on, and so he snaps out of it there. And so now Dr. Lillian Brooks is all excited that he's shown some promise or some response to the procedure. And he's going to continue on with with the uh, with the experiment or with the with the study or whatever. And so he he and his daughter go get sushi one day. Um, the next session, Doctor Nolan gets um, he wakes up in this apartment. He sees his wife again. The faces are blurred. His daughter again. He lost his his, uh, his wife in the car accident, um, but he can't still can't see their faces. But he picks up on them. He sees like a green fence. He sees this wallpaper he's never seen before in this apartment he's never lived in before. So he kind of snaps out of that. Um, talks to you know talks to Gary at this point. Trying to pick up like you know what's going on. He talks to his, his friend Dr. Gary. It was like you know did I ever did I ever um, um, uh, live in an apartment with my wife before the house because I don't think I did. And Dr. Gary's like you know I don't really know I was over I was in this part of the country or something at med school or whatever. And then also, um, he has, in, in his actual home, he punched a hole in the wall. And he's like, you know, am I getting violent? Did I ever hit my wife? You know, trying to figure out what exactly happened or who he really is. And so Dr. Gary and Nolan both try to, like, start picking up on some, some office going on. Um, like, Nolan and a Ava had a secret handshake, and he can't remember the handshake. But the next time, um, after, after the apartment uh, session, he goes, to, he tries to find the actual apartment. And so he finds the actual apartment, um, he knocks on the door, you open it up and you meet uh, another, another uh, uh, wife or a wife or a, a woman and a daughter that her name is Miranda Brooks and the daughter's name is Ashley. So he goes there the first time and, and just immediately runs out because he recognizes that he's having some deja vu, or, or, which is already seen, I think we covered that in language, but he's having some deja vu and so he goes in the apartment and runs out. And so... The next thing that happens is, yeah, I think he has a third session where he starts to see, we, we actually starts to see the faces, and he sees the face of, of this Miranda Brooks that he saw at the apartment. And so each time in this dream, the creepy crawly thing keeps coming up to him and scaring him out of it. Um, but then very quickly, probably about, you know, 60% of the way through the movie, you learn what, what has happened is Dr. Lillian Brooks has been working on uploading consciousness and, or he has, another, he has another session where he falls down some stairs. And so, but, but then Dr. Lillian Brooks tells Nolan that what happened is, is her son was the, was, was Thomas Brooks, and he fell down the stairs. Well, you don't know why he fell down the stairs, but he, he had went down some stairs, and um, he was already, it was already too late to save him by the time he got to the hospital. So his mom saved his brain waves with an EKG, or EEG, and now has uploaded his consciousness into Nolan, who had the car accident but was brain dead, and now just magically isn't brain dead because she uploaded her son's consciousness into his. 
So on top of all of this broken science going on, which again, I can get over the broken science if it provides any novelty or something interesting to comment on, but absolutely not, because basically what happens is Dr. Lillian Brooks just wants her son back to go be a doctor. Like, like literally that's what she says in the movie. So it's like this total, total nonsense. But what happens now is uh, Nolan, who is who's really Thomas, Nolan's body, Thomas's personality, characteristic life experience, goes back to um, Miranda, and she's obviously still carrying the name um, Brooks, but goes back to Miranda and like, you know, says, I'm, I'm Thomas in, in Nolan's body, and she's like, you have to leave, and he's like, you know, um, uh, you know, just talks her through the wallpaper, and her going through medical school, just memories that only he would know, and so she's like getting all freaked out, and he starts noticing all, all of the pictures um, of, of him had been, had been taken, had been taken down. And so, and so he gets furious, he gets mad, he escalates anger, and, and, and kind of like threatens or, or scares Miranda and uh, Ashley once again. So it goes back to Doc, his mom, and, and she's like, oh, you already, you already fucked it up again already? At which point, um, Nolan, Nolan drops Ava off at uh, Gary's house for a little bit, um, and it was like, he, he needs a couple days or something, and, that, and that's when he goes to... Uh, Miranda, but then he goes back, goes back to Doc, his mom, and he's like, you know, we need, we need one more session to, um, basically see some faces or see how much more you can remember or whatever. So it goes back into the black box, and then he realizes the creepy crawling thing, but he needs to kill the creeping crawly thing so it doesn't come after him anymore. Remember, you still haven't seen the, his face yet. You know, it's super predictable what's going to happen is that was going to be Nolan, and so, sure enough, it is. And again, in this hypnotic, weird world, if you leave the front, leave the door, your personality dies or something. And so he, he responds, he's supposed to kill the, supposed to kill the creepy crawly thing so he can move on with his life, even though he's been uploaded into another person's body. <laughs> and so he goes, he's right about, he's like, you know, having, and, and during, he's hypnotized, but he can hear the voice of Dr. Lillian Brooks. So he's gonna, she's going to count down, and he, he's supposed to kill the thing, and then he realizes, he sees the face, and it's Nolan, and he, you know, you realize, I don't think he said explicitly, but if he kills the personality and the hypnosis, then Nolan actually dies, and, and Thomas becomes Nolan, becomes Thomas in Nolan's body for real. And so it's just like, okay. And so that happens, and then uh, you have one more like, kind of flashback scene where Thomas's consciousness r remembers that, in the same way he just, re like, a, escalated anger against Miranda and we got kicked out um, that the reason he fell down the stairs is because him and Miranda were fighting and his daughter Ashley came by and he like, he like super saiyan kicked her and so, so Miranda dumped through him down the stairs and that's why he was dead so in, in the hypnosis zone he makes the moral decision to not kill off um, um, Nolan's personality and and he leaves like the front door when his personality like dies and so, uh, at this point, uh, Ava and Dr. Gary, they busted into the room. They're like, you know, come back, Nolan, come back. And so, Thomas's morality, consciousness thing made the decision to let Nolan's personality live in Nolan's body. And so, Nolan comes out of it, and he can do the handshake again with Ava. And he, you know, he can braid her hair like he could before. And so, a lot of, lot of bullshit science... Uh, again, I can get past the unrealisticness, and that's that's really like the end of the movie. <laughs> but the unrealisticness paired with again the underlying theme is like mom wants her son back to be a doctor. Like what? So I thought this this script was absolutely absolutely should just not have been produced. So I did not like this one. I thought this was off putting. But he made your themes uploading consciousness, downloading consciousness. No, just no, just no, absolutely not. Um, and then again, doesn't doesn't in no way even forgetting that part. What, in what way would uploading um, brain waves to a to a dead like a brain dead person's body? How did that revive the brain neurologically? So that was that was just I don't know. This movie was not a good one for me, and I don't recommend it. So thank you for watching my review of Black Box, and I will see you on the next one.